every day comes with a fresh chance to make things right for you and for those you care about. The goddess flowed through me much in the same way that hope and love you described Delamere gave to you, but now it's cold. I think that's what I always admired about humans, your people. Your lives are shorter than mine. I went back and rewatched my season zero, or my episode zero, and I say something very similar to this in that. Uh, from my people talking, it seems like after we read session zero, people also go back and rewatch. I'm just not, I'm trying not to cry from you two. <laughs> but I can cry now. Pass, Jesse. Ha ha ha. You're just staring at this. <laughs> just dissociating. <laughs> I Don't hear. cry. <laughs> Someone showed up to the stream and said, oh, I'm going to go watch from the beginning. Yeah. Because they hadn't watched it yet. <laughs> oh, it's so nice. I think I've decided that I'm going to stick around and see where they take you. I'll try to help you along the way where I can. But I get exclusive rights to the song of your life. <laughs> that's what she wants. Shit. <laughs> you certainly have songs for the pleasure. You offered it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's a contract. No take backs. Experience. Verbal agreement. It's a new day. So whatever comes next. And I kind of like sl uh, smack you on the shoulder. Get off my ship! In oh shit, he pushed me! <laughs> Cult. <laughs> yeah. What you doing with that ball? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that blood was really hard. Uh, to him, it was a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Billy. Billy! Billy mentioned. Worst time to call me, boy. It's okay. My players got uh, underground town genocided too. <laughs> yeah, you're watching this on Twitch. Hello, chat. <laughs> uh, if you've been hey. watching this live with us on Twitch, uh, we appreciate that. I'm sure we'll tell you that in person when we do the little posts. Or not. Who knows? We're forgetful. We <laughs> like fuck you, actually. <laughs> But thank you, thank you guys so much for watching. Open it up with that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, actually! <laughs> <laughs><laughs> Come here. This is my son. Welcome! Welcome again! Yeah. And fuck you, as and promised. Fuck, fuck you. you, actually. Fuck you, actually. Uh, for those watching the YouTube, that's gonna be a little weird. Watch episode five before you watch this. If you're not watching the episodes before you watch these... That's uh, weird. That's, that's insane. Weird. That's, that's, that's an that's insane choice that I support you, actually. <laughs> yeah. So we take that back. Yeah. Welcome. Well, I almost did that with um, Never Stop Blowing Up. The, the the series I drop out because I uh, there's there's a sh after show and there's a real show and I started watching the after show and I got like five ten minutes in before I was like are they talking about the episode that I haven't seen I always have to check the runtime mm. or else it's hard to tell yeah I never had that problem you two just need to get better at well, watching fuck you things. actually <laughs> yeah read read run. read your titles I read the title the title sounds like the title the Thank you. Titles look like the episode. It's titles the one like the time episode. that tells you if it's a venturing party or not. Yeah. Damn it, Dropout. Either out, way, let's better. talk about our yeah. tabletop thingy. We're, we're not here just to talk about Dropout. Wouldn't it be cool one, to one, have two. a play a game DM by Brennan Lee Mulligan? I think I would die. Yeah. I mean, Stefan, you're great. But Brennan Lee Mulligan. What if we just, we're just talking about him this whole time? Season finale. Season finale. We did not realize it was going to be a season finale when we first started going. Yeah. We just sort of got there and was like, this feels... Like we're done for now. It yeah. feels like closure. Yeah. I think it was at the, uh, like when we took one of our breaks, because this was a long session of us sitting and mm -hmm. recording. Yeah. Because uh, like at our first break, we're like, I think I found, like, I think this might be where we end it. Mm -hmm. Like, so we're like, okay. So we just went a little longer that day and yeah. ended it. Yeah. I, I think originally we had planned six episodes yeah. and then we're like, you know what? No. I was thinking six would be, would be like, I, that's what I was aiming for. Because I was like, we got it. We got to start wrapping this up for now because I, I have to. Do, do all the this production. I have to plan. Yeah, so uh, obviously Karna getting arrested and thrown in jail was part of the plan, but where did you think it was going to go that like you thought there'd be a sixth episode? I didn't know. <laughs> I, like once we got here, I was like, all right, I don't know where this is going. I don't know if you'll if you'll try to escape or if you will escape. I don't know if if 
you'll just go to jail. I, the entire party was split. <laughs> yeah, no, you tell, you pretty much told me before we started the only thing you had planned out was Karna's capture. Everything yes. else was our initiative. Yeah, and I let you know that, that you were going to be doing that because your character would know ahead of time yeah. that you were going to be doing that. Um, By the way, you're arresting your friend. Just <laughs> Well, and yeah, like, you, you, you even see, I think, in episode four at the end where I Friends just go... strong word. Um, actually... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of episode four, like, I cut out the part of me like being like... This isn't a good ending. We need a better ending. Yeah. Because you guys just going off to sleep is a bad ending. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wait, you guys leave. Yeah. <laughs> and it was all a dream. And I wrote us into a corner. Because mm. <laughs> that was dramatic. <laughs> I don't know where this needs to go. Um, but, uh, yeah, the uh, someone, someone asked, do we know when, when season two, uh, Caden Bibb, I believe, asked, uh, if we know when season two is going to come out. And we don't. We know we're, that we're going to be filming it this month. Or at least part of it this month. Um, yeah, we're uh, we're also in the middle of moving. Yeah, we're, so. we're in the we're in the middle of a move. Quinn's about to go on a a, a nice vacation, well deserved, well earned. Mm. Uh, so it's like there's a lot happening all at once right now. But we're gonna do our best to shoot at least like a, a first half of like some some arc here. We can at least could we at least say. We're starting tomorrow. Yes. When we have finishing, a, yes. yeah. <laughs> no fucking clue. Yeah, we'll be, we'll yeah. be, we'll be filming uh, session 5.5 tomorrow, which will be exclusively for patrons because it's just going to be a little bit of, like, housekeeping that we'll be role-playing. And I assume mm -hmm. anything that's, like, really prominent in the role-play would get mixed into the first episode of whatever's next or something like that. Anything that's, like, canon. I, I have a dramatic... Like way I want to open okay. All right. uh, the, the the second season proper, so like people will, will be able to put stuff together. But if people end up wanting extra this show, they they'll be able to go to the Patreon. All right. Um, and uh, I don't know when we'll be able to release that because I'm I'm gonna start handing off, shifting off some of the editing duties to Jesse, um, so that I'm not doing literally the entire post process. Yeah, so a little five point five will be a good <laughs> test for post production. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good good sense of the workflow. Still mm. accepting applications for that extra editor just in <laughs> case you you Yeah. <laughs> in case I suck. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'll probably just be if I'm busy. <laughs> so uh we also got another question from Dying Nineties Kid. I'm sorry. Uh, will Alex lose his power since he is having issues with his goddess? I know the rules of Paladin and Cleric are different, but this could affect some of his divine spells. So, yeah, in 5 and 5th edition, Wizards of the Coast kind of flavored it that a Paladin doesn't have to get their powers from their uh, sort of deity. It's mainly the oath that produces it. That's why it's shifted to charisma. But I, in Alex's mind, he swore his oath to the goddess, which is why... It, you notice when he's using his powers in direct opposition to the pontificate, it got difficult. So that's probably as deep as we can go into that right now. Yeah. Well, and, I, and I've never told you exactly what's going on, I don't think. But like, you, you, you know, I, I guess we've talked a little bit about it. But I, I don't want—I don't want to say too much. But um, uh, apparently, people are saying the mics are still blown out. I think I can't do much about that at this I point. I mean, this. <laughs> This is one. <laughs> yeah, but um, the the yeah, what's going on with Martin? I don't want to like say too much because we'll explore it in the second season. But uh, it will uh, it will eventually become known exactly oh. what's happening. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, a Billy plush would would be so cute. Little Billy. Little Billy plush. Oh. Uh, but yeah, in terms of uh, how everything kind of played out, as a, a player, I love just kind of like, you know, like you're improvising, going by uh, whatever the hell's going to happen, which is why I wasn't going to tell him about your plan, and I wasn't going to tell you about Mod's plan. So it's uh, just fun just trying to watch a story play out like that. It's like, I wonder who's going to like take the initiative and go first. Yeah. Let's see which happens. <laughs> Karn is just about embracing this chaos <laughs> at the end of this. Because uh, he's found himself in scary situations with the church. Those who have seen episode zero, you know. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun in this episode, kind of like delving more into like the nuances and backgrounds of the characters and their motivations. It was great because, like, at this point, I hadn't seen um, the uh, Karna Session Zero. 
So you just talking about Delamere was like, I was like, oh, cool. And now I get, I got like getting to see it, you know, if there's, you know. And I had that same reaction yeah, when Alex's dad came into the room and yeah. it was like, oh mm. shit, there's history here. Mm. Yeah, the fact that none of us knew each other's backstory, which is really like why I, I wanted to make sure that like I at least didn't sit in on anybody's session zero. Learning that as the fact, like your dad is the person that fucked up my link. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I, I can't remember when I put together that that could be a thing, but it, it was definitely before we filmed um, because I, I, we were hashing out what your guys' backstories would be, mm. and I'm like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I love that DM moment where something just kind of clicks. It's like, okay, this character's got this working in the backstory, and that one's got, oh, they can be related. What if I... <laughs> My, how these ties bind. Ooh, we could complicate the situation a little bit. <laughs> what if I cause drama? Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of drama, you still don't even know that Martin joined you on the escape. Uh, yeah, Maud does <laughs> not, and Maud nor Ren know that that is. I Alex. would love to just keep running with that. Yeah, <laughs> new guy here. His name's Alex. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Maud, he this was is... an asshole. This is what happened to him. We hate that bitch. <laughs> we don't talk about yeah, him. Just talking to Alex, and let me tell you, this guy Martin, real piece of shit. <laughs> You're so much better than the other human we knew. <laughs> You're one of the good ones. You're different. Um, but yeah, uh, it, and we were, we were saying it actually like kind of j jives with Maud's sort of autistic coding. Mm, being face yeah. blind. Yeah. yeah, no, it totally makes sense. <laughs> I was I was grateful for the low roll because I was like, oh, it'd be better storytelling if she doesn't notice. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very funny. Mm. Um, and. Uh, I, I thought I had a thought, but then I didn't. So uh, you guys talk. Mm. Yeah, did anybody have any uh, more questions? Well, so there was something that even I asked while we were doing the rewatch, but we saw that the magistrate didn't have um, the green eyes that seemed to be kind of the hallmark in the pontificate. Yes, uh, I believe Kai in the chat asked that. Um, is there anything you want to allude to that, or is that just going to be a standing mystery? Um, I, I would just say not everybody who uh, is in political positions um, is necessarily a combatant um, and therefore would not have the yellow eyes. Um, Interesting. Did you want to, did you want to kind of, because someone asked kind of what like the ranks in the pontificate are, do you want to talk about like the two tracks that you told us about? <laughs> I can get, get into it one second. I got to bring up my, my notes <laughs> to the wiki. I got to bring up, yeah, my, my, my wiki. <laughs> while, you're, while you're bringing that up, uh, I'll, I will address the, um, there was the scene where we had you leave, just like, fuck off so I can do some stuff behind the scenes. Basically pick that one part of the shackle. What Karna was planning at that moment was, uh, on one hand, it, it's kind of like a piece of kindness to him because he doesn't want you implicated in his escape. But on the other hand, it's, fuck you, you got me in this situation. <laughs> uh, had you not actively attacked your people and just tried to sneak me out of there, scurry me away... I would have handcuffed you to something and fucking booked it. I'm honestly not sure what I would have done in that situation. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I deserve this, I guess, yeah. <laughs> Which is why I wanted to be, like, secretive about it. It's like, okay, I'm going to handcuff him. Hopefully Mod will be doing something at this point. I'll, I'll use whatever chaos that is to get as many of these people out here as I can. Hello, I am doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Mod's dancing, <laughs> dancing out there by the fountain. Perfect! <laughs> So yeah, there there's a there's two tracks sort of of hierarchy in the pontificate, um, with, and they sort of overlap here and there. Uh, but there's essentially the clergy, which are both sort of religious leaders and also political leaders, and the apostles, which are the military leaders. Um, and the clergy has, in order, friar, abbot, scholar, herald, magistrate, vicar, pontiff, and high pontiff. Um, the magistrate uh, um, leaders are can particularly be more politically appointed than like heralds, for instance, which have to also be practicing clerics and are able to actually defend so themselves. So they're like the oldy judges. Yeah, well, and they're they're kind of judge, jury, and executioner, yeah. uh, depending on the situation. That's how judges worked back then. <laughs> yeah, like like, but like she's also like like Harold Moira. She's active. Right. She's on the scene doing things. Um, so she's like kind of a police captain in addition to being higher in the religious hi hierarchy. Right. She could uh, become a magistrate potentially or, or a vicar, but um, it's, you know. She's a candidate, but right now she's still doing God's work. Yeah. 
Um, and, and again, a lot of magistrates are, are sort of politically motivated in their placement. And uh, so... You, Always good to have in a church. Always a very healthy system. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, I think one thing you can put together from what you saw of him there is that he's very financially savvy and he's very Machiavellian in, like, what he's doing. Um, we don't know what he's planning right now, but it's something. <laughs> <laughs> what you do know is he's planning to make money. <laughs> he's good at that. I mean, uh, he, he the knows way the he jack was, of aces well enough. The way he was holding that foreign sap was definitely <laughs> alarming. Also, speaking of that, uh, it was only when you gave us the final cut to, like, just look through a week or two ago that we got to see that final roll of all the consequences yeah. of yeah. after this i'd like to yeah. check in with you guys on like how you what you guys are thinking about all that but uh, <laughs> the, the other one is the military track the apostles i mean you have apostles officers commanders grand commanders and high apostles uh so and and the pontiff and high apostles are like sort of um the highest tracks before the high pontiff who is leading the entire Right, the, the pontificate. Um, yes, he's, <laughs> he's, he's the pope. Uh, it's a pontificate. He's the high pontiff. Um, and he, he's elected in, as, as a lifetime position by the pontifical council. It is very Catholic. Yeah. Um, so I have a whole... I have so many details. Like, And I think Quinn's the only one who's really gone into them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, I've, looked, I've looked at some of it. Like, obviously not the pontificate of Bastion. I don't give a shit about them. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd, li I'd like to check in on... Uh, what are you guys thinking about what that final... I tried to just communicate as much as I could purely through images. Mm. Um, and I'm wondering what you guys are thinking about what all that was. I'm happy that Billy and Violet are friends. Yeah, that's so nice. <laughs> so nice for her to have a little animal friend. It is interesting to see... Uh, the, the one part that really stood out to me was the idea that, unfortunately, Karna did kind of spur what he had hoped to avoid, which was making the military go super locked down on all of the magical folk in the city, as mm. you saw. Mm. Uh, Sir Dolagos, I believe it was. Pseudolagos. Pseudolagos. Uh, Basically, it just means a liar. <laughs> yeah. Getting, uh, uh, getting taken in by the pontiffs. Yeah. Yeah, and those poor pixies. Yeah, Martin they're screwed them over. The, pic the, the pixies, which are entirely Martin's fault. So yeah, I, I, I told it, you this beforehand. But like, don't feel too bad. My players also genocided an underground city. So once. Yeah. to at least to, to, to kind of better, it wasn't just uh, Alex slash Martin just trying to snitch on all everything everything. Um, he thought that the orphanage in the Abbey was in danger by having a pixie settlement so close because mm. in his mind. Pixies, not just because of the pixies, but because of what they do with uh, like Magitek, can have disastrous results. Yeah, those guys are super dangerous. I get you. Yeah, yeah. real will... medicines uh, to yeah. society. I will also note you guys left the door open. Uh, <laughs> That's not on us. They have door watchers. Yeah, no, yeah. they have oh, the door. You, you left statue, the original the statue, statue door, door open. Oh, oh. and we also so they were gonna find it no matter what. And there's still also <laughs> I mean, there's, so, so, there's still we, also a cockatrice somewhere. Yeah, so the cockatrice is all of our faults. Yeah, Let's, we, we need to be fair as, about as that. Was the stairway open? Yeah, we did a lot of bad. Well, so you know, Martin didn't even think that Martin that would have told them about the stairs. And, and that's even not if, on you. If that if that door had been shut, Martin would have told him about the stairs. So I'll yeah. I'll take the blame for that. But the cockatrice is our whole. But that's the party's fault. It was also because you guys just sort of left the door to the stairs open they was always uh, going to be found um and the thing and now you guys know i think about this thing. Yeah, <laughs> always shut doors even though martin probably would have wanted the door open still we just need like a notification stefan will remember that well yeah no and like the thing is like i'm big on what makes a world really feel alive is consequences like mm. if you make a decision there will be cons there, there might be good consequences or bad consequences mm -hmm. but something will happen that you don't see yeah um like for for instance and this will just scare you a bit <laughs> um, remember when Martin uh, rolled poorly on tying, tying uh, uh, the the uh, oh yeah the one jack ja jackalite we caught the yeah. jackalite jack you caught and frog that had consequences. Oh, and no. I rolled for that after the fact, but oh, shit. And, I, and I'm not going to oh, tell you. Oh yeah, we left we just left him in the woods too. Yeah, oh, my we God. left him with uh, Kern. Kern was there. Yeah. And, and oh no, and that and, those nice those nice ladies yeah. that were friends. Yeah. <laughs> those those <laughs> roommates. <laughs> those roommates. <laughs> those gal pals. Uh oh. Are they <laughs> I hope they're okay. Well, somebody, I won't tell you if they're okay. Uh, they might be. Okay. I rolled for it. <laughs> cool. Um 
Well, because you also like bringing that up. The thing that sticks, obviously, in my mind as as playing mod is um, is Deb and and Arn. Are uh, Deb's just like I assumed the first time I saw it, I was like, oh no, is Deb sick? But then. I realized, oh, she's just been waiting every night for Red to come home. That that was my intent, yeah. I'm yeah, so no, sad. No, no, and she's still aware either of you And are. she still yeah. has to deal with the Cullens, who just, right. like, buyout of the whole region was something that was introduced, but quickly yeah. ignored by us. Yeah, so if she thinks that her son and Maud are dead, then... Arn might just be engaged to a Cullen right now, and we don't know, you know? Yeah, like, they, and they never got the stuff for the cake. That's the most important thing. Yeah, so she might just have it's to go, well, it's a Cullen wedding. We're Come broke. <laughs> well, and the, and the thing is, and they're vengeful fucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So if they've already paid ahead for it. God. Yeah. Man. Uh, that, yeah that's that a very loaded a scene mm. of her sitting but, down in that chair. <laughs> I, I don't know if you can go into it, obviously, but, like, I remember... Fix this like, for me now! <laughs> <laughs> um, with, a, you know, like, as a as someone who creates content, the beginning, the previously on, is really important to show, like, what is important in the episode. And I kept thinking it was weird that, that Ginny is in the previously on. So I have some fan theories about that, but I don't know, you can't say anything. Because she works specifically with Delamere. Okay. Yeah, um, it was just there for the Delamere context. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was Delamere's apprentice in my uh, session oh, zero. I see. Right, okay, then yeah. all my fan theories are out the window. <laughs> and, and, she, and she was also, she's she's in Karna's backstory. Yeah. Um, I didn't really watch it. I watched well, it we, like... We'll, we'll stream it live here at some point. We will. Yeah. yeah. At one point, we're going to do a stream where we do all the session zeros and then a talk back. Oh, uh, this is... Like before. So the, or, sorry. Yeah. So this good, just okay. came up. This is an interesting question. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you just did uh, you all discuss what level of inti intimacy and violence there would be beforehand? Because that that's I, usually I, I asked and everyone's like, eh. yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> so... am, like I'm I'm very loose when it comes to that kind of thing. In fact, mm -hmm. I am probably the most <clears throat> jaded person at this table when it comes to like being willing to describe this shit. Mm -hmm. I feel like on a performative like on camera thing, you'd hold back much more than I would. Mm. I like to be delicate. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. And I'm also very I'm like so chill, like we're all theater kids since but I will Tiny. emphasize that that is an important thing to do yes. for yes. first session. Yes. You, uh, even if you're not filming it for an audience, you mm. always want to check to see what people's boundaries are. No, yeah, knowing, yeah. knowing, knowing what, what people are comfortable with at the table. And I did ask, and everyone was like, we're, we're good with anything. Yeah, I'm fine. So I'm, I'm, fine on the table. I'm fine up to anything up to berserk level, I think. So. And the thing is, I won't go to berserk level. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm ready for full penetration. <laughs> and, I th and I think part of, part of the implicit thing is like also... They're comfortable with whatever I'm going to do, what yeah. I'm comfortable with, which is, mm -hmm. you know, up to a point. You know, and yeah. even if we if we were to cover unsavory things, again, I would be delicate about it because I would want to be. Which is why, which is why I describe sex in the ways that I do on camera <laughs> to be more like viscerally comedic about it as yeah. opposed to being like, oh yeah, just, yeah, like, oh, oh yeah, because yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. oh. also that's a weird energy to have yeah, one yeah. player fully yeah. describe. We're like, okay, sick. Um, <laughs> Should we be here? I need you to be here. Just Part of it. Listen to me describe this. This is my process. <laughs> uh, and then we got Solitary Sword asking if anyone is planning to multi-class uh, or if it's even allowed. It's definitely allowed. Oh, absolutely and allowed. Especially with Martin's paladin status now in question. It's something we've discussed. Me, me and Quinn have been in discussion with, like, what Martin's going to do. Because we, I, I'm, I'm willing to say this, like, na the, the session 5.5 will also be a level up mm -hmm. session where we sort of discuss that and discuss what, what we want to do. And I think Martin will have the most to consider. Yeah. In his leveling up, because we might be shuffling some things around to accommodate yeah. the story. And I joked around with you early on when you when we were talking about like building up Karna and like uh, what you know Sunder was. I'm like, oh, you leave me an easy like back door to maybe like multi class into Hexblade if I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> and someone just said, "Oh, Martin going Hexblade? No, it was Karna the whole time." <laughs> Um, Who can be most broken? Let's so, go. So this is a question Jonathan Ross posed, but actually I'm curious about it too. Jesse, having seen Maud's plan unfold mm. a second time about breaking Karna out or just finding out what the hell happened that night, mm -hmm. um, any anything you do differently? Any regrets? Oh no, everything went perfectly. <laughs> nah. I, um, you know, because I'm very role play. Like I, I basically dissociate and just become the character and I black out. So no, me no. watching it. I re I'm remembering. I'm seeing things for the first time, technically, you know, because I'm like, oh, I did that. Oh, I'm do that. Wait, wait, yeah. Jesse was audibly just going, 
Oh, what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also yeah. with like when she keeps saying things that are hurting Ren, I'm like, stop talking! Yeah, stop talking! When Jesse's in performance mode, he gets dumber. <laughs> yes. I and just... then later, Jesse's like, why? Why did I do that? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I fully just... get outside of uh, outside of the bit. Jesse is also confused. Yeah. Yeah, because I and it was funny. We all saw it. I even mentioned it in the Twitch <laughs> chat. But when when there was like a, I don't. I'm not sure if you said exactly, but it's like all according to plan. Then I just immediately went plan, and then I did it on camera yeah. in the in yeah, the shot. Yeah, I, said, I, said, I, said, I said roll with advantage because it's a planned action because I needed to give Jesse. Yeah, something. and then <laughs> plan. We needed the yeah. story to be. Yeah, you, you need you, you you start to see how pre-programmed we really are in our mm. behaviors. Yeah. But when you're talking about dissociating, yeah, like whenever anybody else's scene is going on, I will actively try to find something else to do. Like when I'm was looking mm -hmm. at my lap, I'm looking at my phone, looking up, okay, what spell components do I need to do the stuff I want to do yeah, yeah. when I'm in the jail cell later? It's very helpful because like with me, I, I, I also was just over and over in my head making sure that I'm saying Martin because... Maud does not know, so I can't know the knowledge at mm -hmm. the name Alex. I can't know yeah. any of this. Yeah, as far so as I know, uh, Martin is inside the jail, and I hate him. Like you know, that's <laughs> that's what I was like. Literally, Maud in that in that picture was me just like ruminating. Yeah. So in the least selfish way possible, whenever anybody else is on, whenever you're not on screen, I don't care. Yeah. Just... It's very funny to see my face also because like I was talking about it while we were watching the um the very last scene. I'm trying not to cry, and it looks like I'm just like in space. Like someone literally was like. Jesse's in space right now. Um, I was I was fully just I look mad, but I'm actually just trying not to cry because I'm like yeah, you're sitting in between ah! you're in the middle of the conversation, two people at the table talking. About <laughs> yeah, you. you're just like role playing as hard as you can, and I'm just like I I'm so I'm moved by this. <laughs> Which, by the way, I, I do want to change up our table setup for like mm -hmm. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because like I want a more I want to be able to get your guys' faces more often, and I mm -hmm. want you guys to have a more easy way to talk to each other. Yeah, right, so yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and change up what we're doing here. Okay. So don't don't be surprised if if uh, next time things are a little little different with how this is set up. Yeah, it's it's been very helpful for um for you playing Ren and me being able to look at you like this because mm -hmm. like and also you playing um I don't every NPC. Yes, <laughs> but, it's a very uh, natural direction to look. Yeah, because we can like cry at each other and we can see each other <laughs> crying even if the camera doesn't capture it. Um, yeah. Well, and like what what's what interesting about that moment for me is that like. I notice this a bunch of times is like when when I'm playing a character an NPC in here uh it surprises me when characters say things that I didn't think about saying. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. uh, in in session 1 it was um the one, one of the why one of the one of the one of the lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, of Kira. Them. <laughs> uh, uh Kira talking about Beck where where she was like saying uh, the cockatrice is named Beatrice and like you're like, oh, that's cute, and and Kira's like, yeah, yeah. it's adorable. Yeah, it's Everything she adorable. does is adorable, and I'm like, I didn't say that. She said that. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta become possessed by possessed. the character. It's crazy. I'm, I and, I love it. It's such a fun and, activity. And yeah. Genuinely, and it sounds like bullshit actor stuff, but like mm. it's just because I'm in a mindset. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um. Like, you I didn't. Start, Ren started crying. Mm. I just. It just started happening. And yeah. I was like, oh, well, I guess Ren's I guess Ren's sad. <laughs> yeah, no, like, Maude does the same thing. I, I just start crying sometimes. Like, especially in d and I, I start tearing up. Because, yeah, easily. like, when I'm playing a character, I'm just in there. Like, I didn't remember... In, in, in session four, um, with, when you gave Ren the squeak roll, and he was, like, talking with his mouth full and stuff, mm -hmm. I literally didn't remember doing that. You know, you, 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 you know you're in the right headspace when you start invoking memories that aren't yours. Yeah, yeah no, like, and and it's it's just a and a part of it's like you know, um, all of us here have trained in some way to be an actor. Uh, 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 no, you, you played you D &D. Do any theater? Uh, yes. I guess eighth grade theater. Yeah. There you go. Done. There you go. <laughs> I, the, the, the level of training's de like, uh, uh, different. Vast. Fine. <laughs> but like, like you know, I I, I like. It, the thing I actually have trained the longest in formally is acting. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, now it's just something I turn on and turn off. Um, and I feel like you two are also a similar way where, like, it, go, it goes on, it goes off. It's, yeah, it's, I, it, becomes, I, it becomes just a faucet. When, when, I, when yeah. I find free time for myself, I take acting classes yeah. through, mm -hmm. like, various schools. It, yeah. it is a thing that just sort of becomes second nature where you're like, oh, yeah, you, like, other people have to think about things. Yeah. <laughs> um, I it don't I, have to think anymore. I, I start, it's, it's more natural than breathing to me because I started taking professional classes at age six. So I just know it's been more than most of my life. 
Yeah, for me, since middle school, I, I, I like got a, got a bug up my ass to start act, uh, getting on stage, and I did, and I liked it. Mm. Um, <laughs> I was doing radio, and I was a, like somewhere around like five years old, and then just started doing like theater throughout school, and the rest I think everybody kind of understands. Mm. But yeah, like like so, it, it's it's very interesting to me to like sort of because we're it's not like knowing lines because like yeah. my, most of my experience in acting is learning lines and 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 getting to a point where you're so comfortable with those lines is a part of it. when you're so comfortable with those lines that like it you know you get to just act and not worry so much about the rote memorization and recalling the lines mm -hmm. but with improv you don't have to worry about lines so you're just in the character and that's very interesting as a different experience yeah, yeah. um i used to be um i mean honestly i think i think i'm over it but i was uh, very intimidated by improv and I was talking to you about it one day while we were recording sessions. I think we were in the middle of like, we had just recorded four or something. And I was like, I'm, I'm terrified of improv. And you were like, you, we just did it. Like you do that, it that all the time. Just, that was improv. That's right improv. There. A whole lot of improv. Yeah. <laughs> this right uh, now, this is improv. Yeah, <laughs> like conversations and shit. Um, and it's, uh, I, was, I was watching a, a performer that I like talking about how she got into improv. And she was like, yeah, I, I had never done improv before I moved to L.A. Um, she had trained as, like, a, a newscaster, basically, and she loved mm -hmm. acting. And she did improv for the first time, taking a class that she thought was an acting class, and it turned out to be an improv thing. And she loved it because she realized, oh, oh, improv is freedom. Mm -hmm. You're not memorizing things, so it's not scary. It's actually awesome. <laughs> you don't have to memorize a script. Yeah. And it's just acting on instinct, and that's freedom. And once I framed it in that way... I'm not scared of it anymore. Improv, right. improv is a part of like a lot of acting because once you can improv as a character, doing the lines that are written, like you can actually start putting more context to them, putting more of the character that, like you know, you are into it. Mm -hmm. it, it and it, it helps to be a more naturalistic improvisational actor to begin with, which I think I definitely am. Jesse is, and like and like you like to you you, you also like to like wing it sometimes. Yes, like 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 where it's just like. Just letting you, let yourself go to like play with it, yeah. Um, and and that lends itself to just sitting down and doing DD. Turns out, mm. um, which I didn't realize before we were sitting down and doing it. Because <laughs> yeah. um, I I haven't really I I played a little Pathfinder back in like 2013, um, and that was it. <laughs> um, mm. So I, I hadn't actually sat and I certainly hadn't sat down other than like a couple streams to like do this consistently. Mm. Um, so it was very interesting to feel like, oh, okay, no, this is actually fairly natural mm. to do just because of other stuff we've learned how to do over yeah. the years. And it's also just good for like, like me being, I, I, it's really useful that my mom put me in acting classes at age six, like just because I'm autistic, I think I would have much harder of a time having conversations and interacting with people if I wasn't pushed onto a stage and been like, this is your way of life. Like, mm -hmm. this is something that we are actively teaching you how to socialize, you know? I, I would uh, be much worse at socializing if I hadn't decided that I wanted to be on stage more than I was scared to be on stage. Yeah. <laughs> so when I when I used to do, you know, panels at, at cons before the, the dang 2020 events, um, people <laughs> would ask uh, what my suggestion is to actors. But it's also my suggestion to everyone. I think everyone should take an improv class at least once in their life because it really helps you talk to people if you're if you're socially anxious or if you just are lacking a certain social skill just 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 taking it for fun even being, if it's not yeah. professional being it able helps to know you. yes and yeah it's just yeah. good for life sometimes yeah it's extremely helpful like just to exist in the world um i i, I want to cover solitary sword sure. asked uh, did karna have a teacher or was he self-taught uh, as far as his musical skills, I mean, he he grows up. He would have grown up around people. Many that, musicians. That's just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's just their lifestyle, and he would have probably picked up on something, learned from a lot of different people. Yeah. Uh, as far as his magic skill, that's something that he only developed relatively recently in his life. So that's something he just kind of picked up on his own and just learned about on his own, maybe from some of his traveling companions, some, but. Mostly it was just like pick up a little here, a little there. No strict one master. And, and Kai asks, how did the Shopaloo get thought up? I mean, cat, otter, rabbit things. How did that come up? Go to Rose. Um, I wanted to make sure Jesse was invested. So I <laughs> made so, the furries. So I, I invented a, a, a creature that Jesse would actively want to play and be very excited about playing. Um, and then 
I looked into Welsh mythology. I found Cathpolog, which is a, a Welsh creature that's like cat-like, um, and it's called Chapelu in French. Um, so uh, I sort of went with that and like sort of built around that, and that was called Chapelu means bog cat. Mm. Um, so I was like, okay, so it's like sort of a, an aquatic cat as well, because I like to draw from real folklore. It's, it's just good inspiration for stories. Mm. Um, and it always has something like where someone can go, oh, I'm going to learn about this. So you're welcome to people who like to do that like me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know me so well. Inventing a, a silly little buddy that has an accent, I was immediately taken with it. <laughs> well, and, and you get to play a cat and I, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's also fun to like to work on my, my silly French accent, you know? Like if I'm just constantly talking about it, then I will use it. And yeah, we also talked about just how like, we, we talked a little bit about this, but we can get more into like how like Nick like specifically asked to play a a, fa a fauna or, yeah, or like a satyr, and I was like okay, but we will, I don't want to do the D and D satyr. I want to yeah. I want to make one up. I want to and I was like okay, well what if they're kind of hobbits, and like what if they just live like a very ideal lifestyle for yeah, artists? Yeah, we we, we, <laughs> we discussed that. It's like what like you know just very laissez faire, like true hippie race. Like yeah, are... and like their version of like if you were to look up uh, <laughs> Pan. Or, or Faunus on Wikipedia, you'd find very unsavory things. And we're like, let's just uh, separate that out of there. What's a very nice, <laughs> positive, sex positive <laughs> culture we can yeah. create yeah. that is in no way like it is in a lot of uh, folklore. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're very like Dionysian people, just all about the fun, the festivities. Yeah. So we took we we plucked out the nice parts of that of of that and like sort of created this yes yeah, sort of hobbit like uh, species. Yeah. And I understand why they would be so hot. Yeah. Like that's attractive. That's cool. <laughs> it's like fucking and eating. <laughs> And they, li they live on their own. They live on their own little island that's protected by their own little wards, <laughs> and they travel about the they travel about the archipelago mm -hmm. just on a pilgrimage. Unless they just want to stay home, and, and they yeah. can. <laughs> it's highly suggested that they go out there to experience the world, to understand its joys, but and to spread joy. Yeah. But other than that, they live however the fuck they want. It is a land of plenty. Yeah. Which will probably be in danger at some point. But, you know, we're not <laughs> focusing on that right now. Yeah, I was like, no. <laughs> you think I would do that to you? Why would you? <laughs> Why would you have this super mi militaristic, expansive church that you just <laughs> pissed off really badly? Really badly. <laughs> they have no designs on conquest. <laughs> Why would Stefan want to hurt us? The, the person who created Billy to hold a gun to her head if I misbehaved. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. How Which way are you going? <laughs> you know, it's all oh, through the rough ones. Oh. <laughs> Roll the dice. Roll the dice. Roll the dice. Billy in one headlock, Ren in another. <laughs> Just guns pointing at both. I will kill everything you love. Uh, speaking of where did Billy go? Uh, you, you saw her at the, at the end of the she's thing. Hanging she, she's hanging out with Violet. Yeah, she's yeah. hanging out with Violet. She's getting fed. She's uh, at the Abbey. Yeah. She's not too far from home. Yeah. There's a cockatrice between her and there. Presumably, but... Ren would go back to get her at some point. Billy will protect her from the cockatrice. Yeah. Honestly, if the pontificate's still snooping around the... I mean, the pontificate is the abbey, but yeah. the fact that Ren has to go through them to get Billy... All things considered, they wouldn't know... Well, they wouldn't necessarily know his face. You told them names. Uh, But they would have known that Billy came in with us. I yeah, did you, would you have mentioned Billy you in your notes? You didn't talk about Billy. No, no, so I'm just talking about, because they were, in the shot, they were interrogating the abbess. That's and true. And she would have known that we came in with Billy. Hmm. Well. And they at least know that it was. Good point, maybe I have to roll about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just that kind of player. Mm. Teacher, you haven't you have given us, you haven't given us homework. That one. Yeah, here we go. Here's, here's the D20. <laughs> Let me roll about it. Give me a d20. It. I'll, I'll roll for it right now and not tell you guys. Uh, okay, oh how about this one? All right, we'll see. We'll see. Should have gone and found mine. Uh, I'm not going to look. Ten or under? Bad? Uh, how about Jesse calls it under oh, or yeah, over? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. High or low? Uh, even or odds? How about that? Oh. Odds. Odds. Okay. All right. Teacher, you forgot to give us homework and class is almost over. This is why we have the mimic chest. For... You would be that kid. <laughs> Judas. Only, only in history class. Math class, I would have been with everyone else. 
<laughs> Jonathan Ross says, Quinn, your character has caused so much trouble for the people who helped you. <laughs> that was... I was... I, it's part of his conflict. Everything, everything that would have changed his mind about submitting the report happened after he submitted the report. Everything before that was just him collecting... You should ask more questions beforehand. <laughs> What? Well, I have to know. You're all in Kandare, except for Maude, who's just weird. Austin just asks, weird. if it's not spoilers, what's all the other fae species? Um, it's not spoilers, um, partially because I don't know what they all are right now, because uh, I'm leaving myself open to make up as many as I want. Um, but there is a general fae species that, like, as a generalized, generalized category, which many creatures could fall under. Um, and I have already drawn art and stuff for what they look like, but... Uh, You'll have to see. Yeah. Okay, I had... Should we leave green hair a mystery? Enough, like, five people have asked. I mean, I people mean, know. It, it was, it was, it, some people know, because this was a, a part of a thing that you did a long, like, a while ago. Yeah, no, so back uh, back in March and beginning of April, I did a charity drive for Walk MS, supporting people, supporting a charity that supports people who are diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I had, as the top award, if we made $25,000 in donations... I would dye my hair color the same color as my sister's team. I was on my sister's team raising money. Her color was green, green hair, but enough time is a lot. Like, and I dyed it two weeks, maybe it was just a week before we filmed the last session. So that was it in its prime. Yeah. I've since cut it all the way back to the root because it had turned teal. So it was because of you and your generosity. That's the answer to the question. Um, Kai's asking, if, is there any places to find art references for the characters? If you're a patron, you, you should have access to an art gallery. And um, if you're five and up, I believe. Yes. And if you're a YouTube member, we're going to try to put like all the art into single post if we can. Uh, yeah, if we can figure out how to do that. It might be worth posting some of them to Instagram and stuff like that, too. Like, not all of it, but some of them. Potentially, yeah. But just like the character I just portraits. don't think about Instagram. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't mean I'm right to not think about it. I World's just don't. largest social media. We, we, we can talk about how well the uh, Linden bit did on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> Linden's bit, I think it might have hit 300k by now oh. um, on TikTok. We were thinking, we were like, because um, I was... TikTok. Yeah, I was I was in charge of making the um, the little snippets that you see on social media, and out of all of them, you know, the Stefan was like, this one might might do some numbers because TikTok be loving. I, I this was I was thing. hoping it might, uh, yeah. but I was like, I'm not gonna assume that it will because that's... yeah, because you can't. The algorithm yeah. is crazy. Like, it could have done nothing. But we were, we were on the same page of like, if one will, it will if be one this will, one. it will be this one. <laughs> Three oh nine. Yeah. 309, all right. Yeah. 309,000 yeah. right now on, on TikTok. That's so cool. Damn. Keep those. And for us, that's good. <laughs> I know it's there are people getting millions and millions. Oh, yeah, but... no, but like, like, and we, and we have like a, a few TikToks look like a couple million. But, you know, uh, in the hundreds of thousands is pretty good. Like, really pretty, good. Pretty, for, pretty, pretty, pretty good for our upstar d, &D it's, show. Especially yeah. for Tales Unwritten clips, yeah. Yeah, for something we've ne we haven't done this Tales Unwritten show, like, specifically before. Haven't put before. a whole lot of marketing budget into. Yeah, yeah so no. it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it also did better than usual on, on YouTube Shorts as well. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I believe over 20K on, 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 on YouTube really? Shorts, which is much better than usual. for. Wow, so, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so I have a question. Knowing how great Mod is with plans... Uh, what, what, while you were out sitting in the boat, not knowing if Martin was going to help at all, what were you thinking about doing to help get Karna out? I think one of the things that she was, like, her not good plan, probably, like, the C or B, was... One of those things that Ren would have to be like, hold up, let's try this instead. Is, um, is, is we would go as, oh, you know what? No. <laughs> That's now. why I decided not to. I assumed it was like a little speed boat, but we would have to, we were rowing Row, it. So once row. we started rowing it, I was like, okay, so I cannot go as fast as we can and have us jump off and have it ram <laughs> the jail set. <laughs> Can't do that. Okay. Plan B. Um, and B, I think I was, you could see me in some of the footage, like looking through my little mm -hmm. spell card book. Thing. Your, your <laughs> list of rogue abilities. Yeah, because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, was that um, I was, as soon as we got close, I was going to have Ren keep rolling or keep keep rowing and seeing if I could do something. Um, my number one plan was something with the gun. I was trying to figure out: should I shoot this gun? Is it going to blow? Literal Chekhov's gun. Yeah, like is it going to blow both of us up if I if I do this at a really integral time? Um, but luckily. I got there and you seemed to be having a plan. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to let 
whatever happens, happens. They seem like they're doing something. He seems like he's in control. Yeah. <laughs> I do love that. that Ma just hears the and goes, it's time! Yeah, <laughs> yeah poor Ren. That's poor boy. That's probably it. Yeah. That big explosion. She she looks up, done hammer and fish in the head with a hammer, and sees a big explosion and says, oh, we're, do we're doing this. We're doing this. Ren, get get up. You know, like, I don't know. Might have been your fire. Look up. Oh, damn. Hope he's okay. Looks back down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we have to go. We have to go now. Uh, but, uh, someone asked something over here. People are asking a lot of questions. Um, I, we may have gone over this a couple of times, but did you have any key inspiration when you thought of like just Bastion as a setting? Um, again, a major one was just need need a contained place so I don't go too crazy with world building. Um, but what about elements like the Pontificate? Ah, uh, uh, like there's a lot of like Dragon Age chantry in there, mm. um, as well as just real world. Poles like the Catholic Church and whatnot, um, and I think also just I wanted to create an inherent conflict with the mechanics of playing the game because that's inherent drama of just like okay, well, what's going on here? Why would this? Why would there be any monoculture on this right. like, fairly large series of islands, mm. um, or relatively large yeah, that may have had life even before humanity docked there? Yeah. So like, so like you know, a religious empire would create a monoculture for a lot of it so I don't have to make too much yeah. Um, and yeah again you can like build there, there's just inherent drama in you're going to have spellcasters on the team and what they do is illegal in certain places so that that's and yeah when when Quinn is like I wanted to engage with that it's like okay well now like the world is informing the story and vice versa mm. Uh, and, and that just happens to work out really well for making a show. <laughs> so like, nothing. Everything feels intentional rather than just there. Um, so that that have to work out. <laughs> but yeah, like if there's, I, I I tried not to make like show my hand too much with like, the chantry from Dragon Age being like an inspiration. But I think it's there. Um, but I tried to differentiate it enough. I mean, the fact that it's the main throughput is anti magic. At least anti magic. That's outside their control. Yeah, I tried to change it up by like having them be like, oh no, they're, they're not anti-magic, they're anti-other people's magic, which is maybe closer to what actual religion is. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. Where it's like, or the actual Catholic Church in particular, where it's like, mm. no, no, we're not anti-religion, we're anti-your religion. No, we just don't Our religion's what you, great. We just don't believe in what you say. <laughs> and, and, and we'll kill you if you <laughs> disagree. Uh, so like, you know, so I, that changes it up at least to make it not literally the Chantry, because their their whole thing is controlling magic for mm. whatever reason that has not been revealed in 15 fucking years. <laughs> We're gonna find out. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. in Veilgard will learn. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I've been waiting so long oh, for, for, for plot lines to fucking make sense in Dragon Age, and I know they know the answers. <laughs> well, bad news. It is now, it is current Bioware, so. Yes, that is a problem, uh. and I, I hope the game's good. <laughs> hey, guy, guy, give him a shot. You know, like you know, let, maybe if they're working on something they really want to. Let's give David Cage a go at it. So oh. what happens. I, I <laughs> trust not, him implicitly. Let's not invoke David Cage without a reason. We can't say his name. Three don't times. say it three times. Put it, all the it, put all it. the androids in the back of the bus. Yeah, that's <laughs> subtle. <laughs> Let's take Star Wars away from you, actually. Ugh. But you know, I, I you know, I'd, I'd love for Vilgar to be good. Uh, I. That that'd be that's that's a great scenario that I would love to have exist. I generally thought about like it's too late at this point, or at least to do it in a way that's timely. But I thought generally thought about going through Dragon Age with Jesse. Oh yeah, because I think Jesse would enjoy the story of Dragon mm. Age. Yeah, no, I would love that because the 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 issue with me is I get bored playing video games, I, and I don't want to yeah, stick with long. something so long. So if you were playing. Like Metal Gear. And I, I probably would. also maybe mod it to like be like, let's just get through the combat. Uh, it's not the strongest part of any of the games. Let's speed it um, up. Yeah, because the, the story is very interesting to me. I just can't absorb any of it because I'm like, I'm not going to play a, yeah. a whole game. But I can't get too into Dragon Age. Cause pretty, like, I know you know some of it about it, but I think me and Quinn are the only ones with like... Oh, I played fandom. all of them. I only, yeah, I only remember the first one, though. Yeah, that one's very memorable. Uh -huh. It's good. 
in my mind, it's one of the few good ones. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think it is the good, the only, yeah, like, it's the holy good, good one. game. Yeah, no, Orange is the only one. Origins, not or, Orange. Um, Regardless, I don't want to get, like, too deep yeah. into this conversation. <laughs> Someone <laughs> else's story. That's Different not right. story. That you, the pot to maybe, maybe we'll talk about Vel- Velgard when it comes <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, do we do we have anyone else's questions uh, here? I was trying to parry away something. There was a question asking. Um, let's see here. Where was it? A uh, question for Quinn. Were you worried about role playing opposite two really good voice actors? One, couldn't ignore the backhanded <clears throat> the state statement there. Um, <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, two, no. I just they're 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 just guys to me. So. <laughs> Even if they can do a voice a lot better, a voice outside their native speaking voice a lot better than I can, good for them. I don't. I don't try to. We talk well, a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I like I know I've known for years that every time I try to do a voice, it eventually just turns into something vaguely Eastern European. Um, I blame the German classes I took, but and that's why when Martin's facade dropped, it kind of just defaulted to my speaking voice because yeah. that was going to be the voice I could trust the most to actually emote something <laughs> when necessary. Yeah, and for the record, there was no fear about having you at the table. I've role-played with you like on several different games. You always invest yourself in the character that you're playing to the point that like it, it doesn't matter how much experience you have behind a microphone. You know how to play your character. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what matters. Well, and it helps to like to have like you know Jesse's going to be chaotic, um, and I don't think Jesse will ever play a character that's not chaotic unless he actively challenges himself mm. to not do that, <laughs> um, and that'll take some time. I refuse to learn any words or numbers. Um, Nick, 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 you know, Nick is is like going to take it seriously, but also going to be a little more light with it. Yeah, I uh, will. I will also embrace the chaos. But I will do it in a way that's usually much more planned out. And Quinn, will I, go, I will actively try to cause chaos in a way that benefits me. And Quinn will go full high fantasy, like like in it, um, in in a way that the other two are more comedically like <laughs> centered and won't. Yeah, um, I mean, it, not that you aren't taking it seriously as well, but like you know, you like to pick your moments. Well, yeah, Car- Karn is a very lighthearted character. He's not going to be that like, ooh, I need to brood now. Yeah. Um, and what are you saying, Quinn? Um. I slightly forgot, but it's like the fact that I'm playing as someone who ha- who has to deal with matters of faith, especially faith in a system that's proving to not match with his inner morality because mm-hmm. he wants to do good, but his notion of goodness is still steeped in what he learned being at the heart of the pontificate. Yeah. And... Be, living in America, we wouldn't know anything about being raised <laughs> in a system <laughs> that maybe doesn't line with our morality. Especially in Texas, <laughs> with a lot of just nomenclature that is very clearly Let's talk right. about the Alamo. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, Sam Houston told us that us 30 guys holding up in this obviously undefendable church was a bad idea, but damn it if we're not going to make it a thing. Gonna try. I saw the outside I- of the Alamo this weekend because I was at St. Japan. It was it was closed. Oh, oh yeah, no. Okay. I mean, it's a good movie theater. Too. Yeah, if you, if, coming back. Yeah, <laughs> ah, the Alamo popcorn. Remember the Alamo. The Alamo's got gosh. Food. The, the fact that so much of that it's mostly just a facade at this point. Yeah. If you go into it, it's more like a hangar. I, I was telling Jesse, it's not interesting inside. Not. You're good. <laughs> yeah, no. If you if go out, do not bother paying. Go outside, get your photo op because it's a nice exterior. But after that, no, you're Pat done. It's like right in the middle of the fucking city too. And they have it. They have it as an ordinance where nothing can like be up behind it except for certain buildings that were already mm-hmm. there when it got famous. Yeah. I, I was more excited about seeing uh, Margaritaville. I saw the outside yeah. of the Margaritaville, and I didn't eat at I it, but I was like, I took, I took you didn't even eat at it. You just no. posted that you were at a Margaritaville. I yeah, took a well, picture inside it also a second day. I went there twice and did not go and it in is the your Margaritaville. your cheeseburger in paradise. It's I all I mean, okay. It is right there in the Riverwalk too. It is. Yeah, Me it and is. Quinn have eaten at that Margaritaville. It's I, not great. I can't, I, well, I, I can't remember. Margaritaville isn't great. I can't general. remember if we ate the Margaritaville or the chilies next to it. It was the there Margaritaville. So I, <laughs> the only time I ever went I to the Margaritaville. I am pulling this back to the conversation. Yeah. The, I, when I built Garna. <laughs> <laughs> I ate at good okay. Mex- Mexican restaurants instead of Margaritaville. When, 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 seriously though, when, yeah, I, yeah. Like, when, when, when it comes to like character dynamics, uh, I did make Karna specifically so I wouldn't be the focus of any of like the real plot heavy scenes, so to speak. I wanted to well. be. Well, <laughs> uh, but when it comes to like interrogating NPCs, stuff like that, I wanted Karna to just kind of go in the background. I want other, pe- he wants other people to drive the adventure forward. 
he just wants to be along for the ride. I wanted to be a character that wasn't necessarily a protagonist. He likes the spotlight, but he's not going to, like... I mean, with the way... most reluctant hero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way the dice have been treating my charisma rolls, I'm not too sure if I can <laughs> keep that up. I have that or every single interrogation is going to be... I didn't. I didn't learn anything. Like but he, these two could crack. <laughs> I, I I wanted to build that happy wanderer Gandalf, who's like, okay, adventure time. Let's go. What do we got now? Cat yeah. lady, pretty <laughs> boy. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's it, it's obviously like the main thing of like any D and D party, but it's very fun to see three main characters just interact. You know, like they're their main the main characters of their own stories. We bring them together and see what happens. You know, because like. Maud doesn't know she's a main character. She's not, she's kind of dumb. Like, she's not thinking about that shit. She's just wandering through life, and, uh, well, and that's Maud, interesting. Maud, like, if, if I recall correctly from what you were describing previously, Maud doesn't think about life like that. Maud sees life as something to survive. You're right, yeah. She, she has been, if you've seen her, um, you know, Session Zero, you know more about it, but, like, she's kind of been, she was in survival mode for so long that now she's, like, able to exist in the world and it's like what does that mean she's making friends for the first time what does that mean and it brings out all this cool shit and i'm like i'm really interested in seeing like alex's uh also first venture into like like are you making genuine friends for the first time what is that like you know and and karna also is like you trust everyone so what like you forgave alex at the end of that but is that a little bit of a strain on your relationship? Or do you genuinely forgive him? What's going to happen next time you need to trust him in a situation? I, I don't know. I was going to say, it's like an, an interesting juxtaposition between you two specifically, because you see life as something to survive. You were raised on tales of glory. So I'm assuming that that, that, that is a huge drive. And, to a, like and really a silver make spoon, a, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Like, to really make a name for himself. Yeah, for, like it... I'm here. Uh, you know, if you've seen the sessions here, or if you've paid us money <laughs> it was it was it was a big drive for him to take that mission when he got because he he originally thought he was getting sent out to the sticks because he was in the heart of it he could see the goddess tree right there and now he's here weeks away his dad dragged him yeah, yeah it, it, it the dragged tr him away the, from the front lines yeah father requested my presence um keep you out of battle yeah <laughs> yes literally yeah uh. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> Karna knows the type. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, 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 like, and, yeah, it's it's a thing where, yeah, we'll have to see, like, how Alex <laughs> deals with his entire worldview <laughs> crumbling around well, him. Well, it's like, and it's, and it's still in a situation where his relationship with his father is still incredibly strained. Oh, yeah. Because now, even if he, and we don't know, he could, even if he flips all the way to anti-church, anti-pontificate sentiment, now That's it's like... That's not what his dad is. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like, well, so you came to the conclusion that the pontificate had bad qualities, you're still a commander in it, doing mm. fuck all. Yeah. So... <laughs> yeah, and you're, and you're a fugitive now. All those people, they're witnesses, they were left alive. Yeah. And it's also such an interesting dynamic of, because, like, as someone like I've... You know, I have a stepdad and I have a, a birth father and there's, it's a very interesting dynamic when you're a kid and your dad is kind of distant and you kind of just like don't like him. And then as an adult, you see them as human for the first time mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, you're dumber than me or like, oh, you made a mistake. Yeah. And that's so interesting as an adult to be like just looking over all your memories as a child. And that's going to be so interesting to like explore. And I'm like so excited to see what happens. Well, and, and, um... I had a thought and it left my brain because I was listening to what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you pre plan what you're going to say. Do the wrong this social is, thing. This is why you don't listen to other people. You, yeah. just, you, you look over you the menu for your before. Turn to talk. You, you look uh, at the menu a day before you're going to go to a restaurant like a normal person. <laughs> I, I found it. Um, but yeah, also, like from, from, uh, from Errol Tremont's perspective, like from Alex's dad's perspective, he, he, he had his first ever conversation with you where he expressed doubt in and the Alex church. fucked <laughs> off. Alex blew up the church. <laughs> <laughs> so immediately joined a known terrorist. <laughs> He's like, I am the worst father. Yeah, no, that, that, that is a very loaded pinch. Um, <laughs> yes, at the last like, Damn it! I tried like, to do something right, and I still fucked up. It's like having one talk with like the like your dad, like a cardinal or something. You have like a chat with him about the corruption of the church, and you join ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> which, 
we had an inside joke while we were actively watching the episode where um, he said, let me be blunt. And we were like, he lights up a blunt. And he's just smoking weed during this whole conversation. So, man, I've lived. War is <laughs> fucked up. So, uh, why am I Scottish and you're not? <laughs> You, mom her, had her no accent. Oh, yeah, that's what, that's gonna be, my, be my thing. Is like if we ever see your mom, she's gonna talk like Just this. Like what if she? What if like dad's Scottish? She's like London English, and well, it's you, like they canceled raised, out. You might, been, you might have been raised by a nanny. So yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah. That it was. There was a governess. We did mm -hmm. cover that. Knew it. Of course, <laughs> of course, there her was. Amelie. Amelie. I'm gonna eat your cooking egg with a spoon. Yeah, but I'll, I'll find her on the beach. <laughs> uh, Salter is sort of asking, Quinn, are you keeping Alex's oath or are you going Oathbreaker? I think I'm gonna keep a bit, a bit of mystery to that, at least when it comes to what Stay you guys tuned. see. Because he's definitely, because with the way I'm handling his oath, he's broken it. But I think that may also come with additional revelations. You need and to and he also doesn't realize that's happened. Yeah. Yeah, you need like, to figure out what your relationship is with your god. But I, yeah, and well, and, and keeping in mind that like we're using D and D as a framework to tell a story, we're not like we're not necessarily going to stick to the Oathbreaker stuff. Like if it doesn't work for the story, it's all about the story and the mechanics come second. Yeah. And they only exist to serve the story. Yeah. It's... Also, kind of weird to command undead. Just generally, yeah. Like, it's well, like we, we what to... save the people? Rise. <laughs> we, we've also been talking about with Karna, like how we don't, like you don't want Karna to have any abilities that cause him to have control over other people's minds. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like that's just fucked. Yeah, <laughs> like en en enchantment seemed like a it, honestly. In my own personal mind, I think enchantment is the most evil of all the magic. It's schools. extremely unethical. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but also, Karna would see it that way. His people, for the most part, would see it that way. So it's just not something that they embrace. They they believe fully in consent in all ways, shapes, and form because they are a people that love life and want other people to love life. Yes. He also <laughs> didn't learn vicious mockery because he's not mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like... Uh time travel movies where every time travel movie has different rules for time traveling and they tell you the rules and you're like okay and you just have to accept it because that's the story we want to tell mm -hmm. or going like looper where it's like don't worry about it don't worry about <laughs> it. don't think about it looper's like shut the fuck up these actually. are yeah these are the rules we have drugs that go in our eyes don't think about it and we're going on a journey right now um but uh someone asked but sleep sleep is just putting someone to sleep it's not controlling their mind it's just Helping just, them. Yeah, no, it, everyone wants to be knocked out. No one wants to be dead. <laughs> yeah. Everyone they, wants sleep. If they don't, they're lying. And sleep just makes so much sense as a bard. It's a lullaby. Yeah. And you by the way, buff. any action you take against somebody that's sleeping, they wake up. So it's not like it can be used horrifically. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, that's something I, I should have done in the first fight is, like, just have... The bad guy just shoot a blast near them to to jolt all those guys awake. I didn't if, think if, about it in the moment. Yeah, if if they if they if they knew how to work sleep, yeah, that would have worked. Yeah, all I need to do is like kick them and they're awake. It, it would have put put my my fight more on on rails for what I was thinking, but it's okay. Um, and you know, we're also we've been discussing like maybe changing up combat mechanics potentially, mm -hmm. just to make it more fun for us and make it move very quickly. Um, but we're, we're we're still working on that, so. Uh, in the future, just don't expect us to like stick to like strict core rules. D and D stuff, um, and certainly not one D and D stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's like so now we're gonna have to be clear because by the time the next season comes out, yeah, twenty twenty four will be the main role. Yeah, um, yeah, we're 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 gonna be home brewing brewing five e. I don't think we need to worry about one D and D. I don't think any of us will care about it. Jesse doesn't know what it is. <laughs> I remember seeing it in the chat because you were like, I'm thinking of mixing up combat, blah blah blah. Uh, you two will care about it. I don't, I'm going to assume Jesse doesn't care. And I, and I was like, I, I hello. <laughs> you barely understand combat now. So it's not even a big deal it's for you to learn It's changing. I don't now. know what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, that said, I think before we wrap up, I just want to ask, uh, like just going down the line here, um, what are you guys maybe most excited to potentially explore coming up? Uh, and if you feel like you're, you're spoiling something, you don't say that. But what would you be interested in seeing going forward? Uh, I, I talked a little bit uh, with you about this, or at least I sent a message regarding this, but right now Karna is most interested in uh, Martin's moral compass and what exactly is going on within him. Like, because 
Karna already sees a song forming in his head. He's the he's the son of a demon going against his own god, which is already working something for Karna. Makes him a little hard. <laughs> it's like okay, yes, no, I can, I see. Okay, there's a power it's chord. Hard for stories. Yes, <laughs> I'm hard for lore. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, he still empathizes very much with Maud's situation. Uh, he has a fondness for the town of Tradesman Saddle and knowing that it's, like, going through bullshit is bothering him. So he's trying to, like, think of, like, what's a, what's a way that we can make these things work together? Um, well, I know that it's going to be... I I only have a small idea of what, like what's going to happen with um with Alex and and Maud because I don't know until we know the setting I don't know what's going to happen does she ever find out I don't know we don't know until like the situation is in front of us um but I'm very interested to see what happens there um and and you know their their relationship you know uh and also um you know I would I I'd, I'd love to see some um of her uh you know Something, something with Maud's sister. I'm sure will will come up. I'd I'd love some um some closure there. Um, so no spoilers or anything because I don't even I don't even know. I don't Jesse have anything. Know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen, but um I'm ex I'm interested in that. <laughs> Gosh, what am I not interested in? Um, it, yeah, it's my main drive is kind of just exploring Alex's character, having been pretty much personally uprooted from a lot of his beliefs and how he's going to reconcile his personal values with what he sees in the world because he, this is like this is like his first week weeks outing having only really seen what was going on around port tarif and the capital and now he's going to be seeing a much wider world and hopefully seeing a more true face the pontificate and a lot more perspectives yeah and how that's going to shape what he becomes and is he going to be a person that just tries to do his own personal level of good or is he going to become a terrorist or is he going to go um i i'm re i'm the real one standing for fora the rest of you are liars and he's going to try and redeem the pontificate mm -hmm. you know, let's was... write this fucking song yeah. let's go <laughs> uh sorry just to like bounce back on, yeah. a wi on a wider scale obviously karna is thinking about delamere and knowing that she's alive out there as well is something mm. that's it's something that he needs to explore. Uh, his closest connection to her currently is Sunder, so he'd probably focus on that at the moment. I was about to say, because I was thinking, I was like, oh, Del I'm so excited to see yeah. Delamere possibly appear again, because it, it's, it's so cute. Their interactions are so cute. Yeah, he, do he doesn't know if she's, like, he never really asked where or how she is. She could be in prison. She could be free. He doesn't know. But the only th connection he truly has is either the church or Sunder. He trusts one of them a little bit more than the other. <laughs> yeah. I, I ship them very hard. And maybe you would if you, if you, if watch you see Zeros, Zeros, which Zeros. are on Patreon now or... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll release yeah, them publicly we'll release eventually. Them we'll have a talk if you, back if you can't about pay, that too. Okay. Yeah. When I, we I feel lot, like it. I have a lot to say about Karna's backstory when we do that. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll do that before we have to leave. Uh, before yeah. Quinn has to leave, too. Um, Later this month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, that's when that has to happen. Clock so, is ticking. <laughs> yeah. um, that said, I think that'll be it for now. So thank you guys. We'll see you next season. Fuck you, actually, or whatever I said at yeah. the beginning. I forget. <laughs> Goodbye and go fuck yourself. Drink some Yay. water. Yay! I love you. Bye. I don't know you. <laughs>